In the news, ruling party APC and opposition party PDP hold congresses across states of the Federation. Central Africa Republic declaration of unilateral ceasefire in fight with rebels is hoped to lead to peaceful dialogue. There is a potential link to Islamist extremism in the killing of British Conservative MP, police say. Details shortly. This is TOS Television, your digital force pan African news network. I am Abigail Ukmade and this is TOS News 360. The federal government of Nigeria has said that it will compensate the victims of the ANTAS protest with each state in collaboration with the federal government establishing the modalities for the settlement of all monetary compensations awarded by the panels. The government also urged protesters to reconsider marking the anniversary of the protest due to national security concerns. This was disclosed in a statement by the National Economic Council. They also unanimously resolved to ensure the prosecution of persons indicted by the panels. The All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party PDP are conducting state congresses across the states of the Federation. The state elections follow the conclusion of the ward and local government congresses as well as the appeal process. When concluded, the exercise will lead to the emergence and change of guard of state officials that will pilot the affairs of the parties in the state for four years. Some of the states where Saturday's Congress is taking place are those where the party has legal issues, where the state structure has been dissolved, where there is an internal crisis among members or where there are cases of expiration of existing structures. The Kogi state government has called on the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to apologize to it over an alleged $20 billion Naira bailout fund. It sought a court order to freeze as it encourages it to exhibit professionalism in performing its duties. The Lagos Division of the Federal High Court on Friday granted EFCC's application to discontinue the case against the Kogi state government. According to the news agency of Nigeria, the anti grafts Commission withdrew the suit that sought to the state government to forfeit the 20 billion Naira bailout fund meant for payment of salaries in the state. AFCC has alleged the sum was deposited in an interest yielding account by Kogi state government officials. An early morning fire on Saturday has reportedly destroyed property worth millions of Naira at Itobe market of Ofuluku government in Kogi state. According to an eyewitness, the disaster was said to have started when a trader's generating set caught fire, thereby engulfing all shops within the vicinity and destroying them, including all property therein. Although no life was lost during the disaster, the eyewitness recounted that the means of livelihood of the numerous roadside traders were lost in the fire incident. The Onu Itobe al Haji Sahi Adaji has urged people in authority to assist those affected by the fire disaster with capital to restart their businesses. Now to developments across Africa. Central African Republic President Faustin Achange Toadira on Friday declared a unilateral cessation of fighting against armed groups, saying he hoped it would lead to peaceful dialogue. Toadira said on television that he believed a ceasefire would help protect civilians from violence and allow them to access humanitarian aid and basic services. The spokesman for the main rebel alliance, the Coalition of Patriots for Change, CPC, says he welcomed the initiative and that the CPC will respect the ceasefire if the government did. Past peace accords have quickly fallen apart. The country has seen recurrent rounds of rebel violence since former President Francis Bozizi was ousted in 2013. This is your Digital Force Pan African News Network, TOS Television. You are watching TOS News 360. More Africa stories plus global stories when we return. Do stay with us. <music> Thank you for staying with us. Across Africa, Sudan's Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok on Friday unveiled a roadmap to end what he described as the country's worst and most dangerous political crisis in its two-year transition. Since a coup attempt in late September, Sudan's military and civilian power-sharing partners have been locked in a war of words, with military leaders demanding the reform of the cabinet and ruling coalition. Civilian politicians accused the military of aiming for a power grab. He emphasized the importance of the formation of transitional legislature, reform of the military and the expansion of the base for political participation. 
The World Health Organization said on Friday it is deploying experts on preventing sexual exploitation in 10 high-risk countries after a major scandal in the Democratic Republic of Congo where its staff and other aid workers abused women. Some 83 aid workers, a quarter of them employed by the WHO, were involved in sexual exploitation and abuse during the country's massive Ebola pandemic from 2018 to 2020, an independent commission said last month. The plan, which is being finalized, outlines immediate or short-term actions through March 2022 to complete investigations and launch a series of internal reviews and audits to ensure a wholesale of reform of WHO structures and culture, the WHO said in the statement. Afghanistan, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Venezuela and Yemen will be the locations for the work, the WHO said in a statement. Another global scene, the army general who seized power in Myanmar in February has been excluded from the annual summit of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations later this month. An unprecedented move for the 10-member bloc, which traditionally avoids interfering in its members' affairs, a non-political representative from Myanmar was chosen instead of General Ming Ong Hyung in Lanki. Asian, the military had not done enough to end the turmoil in Myanmar. In August, the general named himself prime minister and said the country's state of emergency will be extended as fighting between the army and militia forces opposed to the military coup continued. A spokesperson for Myanmar's military government blamed foreign intervention for the rare exclusion of his junta leader. The Metropolitan Police said the killing of Conservative Member of Parliament Sir Davis Ames has a potential link to Islamist extremism and is being treated as a terrorist incident. On Friday, Sir David was stabbed multiple times at his constituency surgery in Leon C in Essex. The force believes the 25-year-old British man who was arrested at the scene on suspicion of murder acted alone, but inquiries into the circumstances of the incident are continuing. The Met said police officers are not seeking anyone else over the death. And to entertainment, after an eight-month delay due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the 27th edition of the Pan-African Film and Television Festival of Ogadugu, the biggest festival of Africa cinema, is back. First Paco officially opens on Saturday in Burkina Faso's capital and will run until October 23. Held every two years, the festival started in 1969 and represents, till this day, a rare opportunity for African storytellers to showcase their creations on a global stage. The official selection will see 17 feature-length films compete for the festival's top prize, the Golden Stallion of Yenenga. And that is TOS News 360 on your Digital Force Pan African News Network. For more updates, do visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube to stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. I am Abigail Okmadi. Thanks for watching.